Welcome to Clips, a quick review of facts or factoids usually taken from our more in-depth episodes, but today I'm going to talk about a firearm for the first time on our channel. One that I've been itching to cover for years now, the Winchester self-loading shotgun model of 1911, otherwise known as the Widowmaker. Mm, ominous. But why? Well, in a way, it's the fault of one John Moses Browning. He designed an auto-loading long recoil mechanism which he adapted to both a rifle and shotgun. The resulting Auto 5 has an incredible reputation, universally viewed as the classic self-loading shotgun, produced by both Fabrique Nationale in Belgium and Remington in the US. It was first offered to Winchester, who did actually consider the matter for way, way too long. Not unheard of, mind you, but usually the reason they'd leave a patent on the table is that it competed with an existing product, but in this case they weren't selling some other Browning autoloader, and he really believed in the design. Becoming frustrated, he decided to take his work elsewhere. Now, fun fact, Winchester and Browning had been working closely together for years, so much so that they assumed every patent of his would eventually be theirs if they wanted it, which means Winchester's own engineers helped expand on Browning's work, securing the widest possible, most protective patent that they could get, which is where they would eventually hit a snag when he walked away. This guy right here, it allows us to unlock the bolt from the long recoil system and then retract it. So unlock and retract. That is our little charging handle. And while we take it for granted these days, at that moment, that operation of unlocking, and then, whoop, right there, that was patentable. And so John Browning did. Which means our Winchester 1911 fundamentally does not have one of those little operating levers. Hmm, how do you open a breach like that without using a direct lever. Well, on their magazine rifles, Winchester used a central plunger. A bit awkward, but okay. Now, the problem with trying to do a plunger on a shotgun is that this is our tubular magazine. We have shells stacked up in here and we can't just go down the center of our own ammunition. Now, we're gonna need another way to open this thing up. And there is a clue to how uh, embedded on this gun. Let's just keep going forward and see if we can figure it out. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Yep, that's right, folks. You just grab a hold of your barrel and manually cycle that long recoil action all the way back into... Oh, okay, there's gotta be a better trick to this. If you own a Winchester 1911, this little button right here is your best friend and you become intimately familiar with which direction he is supposed to be pushed outwards to the right, like it is now, means that this sucker, the minute we conquer, is gonna drop that bolt. If we push it in though, oh, that's stiff, and come on up and pump the action. Let me just see if I can do this from the table. Okay, sorry, I was beating the crap out of the microphone. All right, I'm holding the barrel back. If I let her forward, okay, there we go. Now, We've left her locked open, thanks to our little button here. Now, when we're ready to let her fly, we just have to push that, and it's stiff all over again, and this gets loud. Oh, you're not gonna make any friends in the house doing that in the middle of the night. Now, we would have chambered around, and we could continue firing. The important thing with this particular gun is to count your ammunition, because you wanna throw that button right before you fire the last round. That way the gun locks itself open. Otherwise, <laughs> you get to work the barrel after it's been dumping a magazine. And let me tell you, it gets cooking. Now, all of that's great, but I started this episode by saying that this was the Widowmaker. And why would I call it that? Well, the 1911 can be stiff and awkward to use, which means many a man has simply just put it on the ground and then put his upper body into cocking this sucker, right? This naturally, when you're standing, points this muzzle at your face or chest. Mm, not the best plan, mind you, but hopefully it didn't just pop off when chambering around. To be honest, I'm not actually sure if it ever earned the nickname in actual blood. More likely, it just burned a lot of hands. All awkwardness aside, I will say that this 1911 
is among my favorite firearms that I own. It was a gift from my family and has, knock on its own wood, run flawlessly for me. I find it to be a great shooter and love handing it to confused people on the range. All right, y'all. Have a good one.